talk about what we call the colossal uh, Norwegian corpus uh, and how we are building that. Um, I'll first just spend a few a couple of minutes here uh, talking about transformer models, if some of you are not familiar with them. It's an NLP type of model that was uh, introduced by Google in 2018. Uh, most known is the BERT model, the bi-directional encoder representations from transformers, but there's been a lot of new models coming after that. Uh, that's basically built on the same concept here. Uh, one of the core idea with the model or the process of building the model is the idea that you, if you're able to guess a masked word in a text sequence, uh, you should also be able to understand the language. For instance, in a sentence like, in a library, you can borrow a mask. And if you're able to guess that that word might be a thing like book or dictionary, or maybe even the word lot, you actually are also able to understand the language. And what this means is that you can create a lot of training examples simply by just having ordinary text. So you can create a large training corpus uh, with just having ordinary sentences. Uh, uh, what some of the pros with transformer models is that they are very flexible. You can very easily train new NLP tasks on top of them. For instance, for categorization, for name entity recognition, for question answering services, for chatbots, for summaries, all those kind of things. And the top layers there are usually fairly easy to train. Uh, they are also today having state-of-the-art accuracy in almost all these different um, NLP tasks. However, there are some negative sides, uh, sides here as well. Uh, the computing power for training the base model is very large. You can, it's basically impossible to train them on single GPUs at home, the base model. Uh, fine-tuned models is a lot easier. And it also requires quite a large corpus, colossal corpus. I I'll tell you a bit more about how large corpuses it requires later. I'm just going first to run you through the process of how we collect the data from the library to add into such a uh, training corpus. Uh, the National Library of Norway started a huge digitalization project in 2005, uh, where we basically tried to digitize everything. And the base in our library is, is stored as METS Alto files. These files contain the text, but it does also contain quite a lot of other information. Um, it does, however, at least give you a confidence from the OCR program on how certain it is on specific words. And that's our starting point here. To, to be able to process this, we go one step further and we take out the essential parts of this. Uh, we, we take out the text and we try to calculate the confidence of each of the paragraphs in the text. Like, this, for instance, even if you can't read Norwegian, you see that the first paragraph here seems fairly okay. The second one has a lot of OCR errors, and also it has a fairly low confidence. So that's our starting point to take out stuff in uh, the METS auto files that are not, uh, does not have high enough OCR quality. Then we go through a cleaning process. Uh, apart from looking at the confidence of the articles and the paragraphs, we do uh, Unicode conversion of everything. We do language detection to see if there's other languages in here that we don't want to have it in. We do quite a lot of standardization, like doing accent in a special uh, and do punctations in a standardized way. Uh, we also 
found it very useful to look at some of the suspicious text in there. Some of the typically non-alpha characters in the beginning of paragraphs. That, and since we have quite a lot of text, we could also, if you're uncertain, we basically throw out the stuff that we find suspicious here. Uh, and we look also at a, a minimum number of words in an article or in a paragraph. And at the end, we do, we segment the specific sentences in here. And we end up with something like this. Uh, ideally, it's close to perfect text as possible with single sentences on every line and a double line between each article or chapter in a book. And from this, we draw the training set for the model. We then also have a vocabulary file. In our case here, we have a vocabulary file of roughly 100,000 words or subwords uh, to be specific. And we look up all those words in the vocabulary file and we create the training record. And this is basically the training record for a transformer model. It has a mask in, in the sentence. Here is the library is masked. And the mask is a number. That's what goes into the transformer. And you have a correct answer that in this case is library. And we can actually draw even several examples from the same sentence here by or from the same paragraph masking out different words and we do this on a lot of text and i'm, I'm using this sort of an example to say what i mean about uh, a lot of text here this is the encyclopedia britannica 40 volumes of text 33,000 pages 44,000 words uh, for 300 megabytes of text uh, if you read eight hours a day, it's said to take you one year to read through the entire thing. The text that's available today uh, in Norwegian is the Norwegian Wikipedia uh, out there. That's the largest currently available corpus. That's three times as large as Encyclopedia uh, Britannica. It's also part of the up-to-date the largest the uh, Norwegian transformer model, a multilingual model that also contains 100 other languages. Uh, that's the base thing. Uh, the English model, however, is a lot larger and it's a lot bigger. The English bird model has 16 gigabytes of text. Uh, ah, heard a peep there. Uh, it's um, uh, mainly because English is a lot more popular language. It, this is our uh, current uh, corpus, 109 gigabytes, uh, mainly from uh, uh, OCR scan books and newspapers from the library, some common crawl and Wikipedia in here as well. It's, uh, th this is another large corpus out there in English. Uh, and there's there's some other ones, but most of them are from Common Crawl uh, thing. Most of them are from web text out there. It's by far not the largest corpus out there, but for a minority language, it's it's fairly large, and uh, uh, it's probably not possible to create such a corpus only from web text today. Yeah, I'm short on time here, I see. Uh, our plans for it. Uh, we want to publish as much of this corpus as possible. Uh, we're talking about, with our lawyers, uh, about the details here. Uh, we have received some TPU re resources from the TensorFlow Research Cloud for training a model. We're currently training a bird based model. It will take us two weeks and we it should be finished before Christmas actually. We train on the we create and we also hoping to train a larger model on TPU pods in April next year. 
goal, just finishing off with some lessons learned. Uh, uh, there's a lot of work that we need to put into the auto files here to make them into text, but we made some code for that as well. That could be interesting for other people that would uh, like to do the same. Uh, OCR quality. Uh, for our use, things that are OCR after 2018 is close to perfect on newer newspapers. However, the stuff before that is not okay. Things OCR prior to 2009 is hardly not usable at all. We're dropping almost all of the text. Uh, the scans are perfect though, so a re OCR here would make give us a lot more text. It takes some time, a bit more time than they expected. Uh, we used roughly six man months on this work so far. Yeah, um, since I'm short of time, I'm dropping the last one here. Uh, this is just a uh, link to our uh, GitHub. Uh, we have published all the code that we are using for this. If anybody else would like to try some of the same thing for other minority languages, uh, should be useful code there. Uh, we are publishing uh, the models as soon as they are finished. Norwegian model goal date is 20th of December. Look at that. And uh, we're hoping to publish the corpus here as well. And that's the rest of the team from the AI lab, the placement. Thank you for listening. Thank you.